All right, we're official now. So mm -hmm. Mike, it's 3.32. You want to wait another minute or two? Let's or give it, yeah, started? let's just give one more minute. Then we'll, 3.33 and then we'll get started. Okay. Hey, Yi, how are you? Hey, good. Sorry, I missed the last meeting. Oh, it happens. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. So no one's going to make them all, but we make an effort, right? So, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, where'd you get all that sun, Bridget? Good God. <laughs> I guess I have to close my blinds. I can't see anything. <laughs> you, you look a little blinded. Yeah. <laughs> so I think mm. this is hey, Ray. Great. Hey, Ray, how are you? Oh, there's more sun. <laughs> so you have your 333, Mike. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome. Welcome to uh, this month's uh, committee meeting. Uh, first, the exciting news is that Jean and Michelle have joined the committee. Uh, and hopefully, we've been able to bring you up to speed so far. Um, if you have any questions or anything as we go, you know, more than happy to kind of review anything that we may have covered in the past, but failed to um, failed to do so with you. So um, let's why don't we all check in, kind of introduce ourselves again since it's a new year and we have new members. So uh, let's do that. Uh, I'll start off. Uh, my name is Mike Cool. Uh, I'm a chapter leader in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I'm a human employee. I'm still working. Um, I'm, I'm on the board of directors for the National Board of Directors, so I'm, I'm very excited about that. Um, so that, that's about it. I think that's, that's a good introduction. So, so Jean, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, I am Jean Duncan. Uh, I am a chapter leader for uh, DBSA Portland Eastside, which has um, three meetings uh, every week, plus a meeting that's held in Nairobi, Africa, uh, Kenya, Africa, um, that was started by one of our members, and then a new uh, support group that's attached to Portland Eastside that's for professional health care Provider. providers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That was started by two uh, medical students. So um, there you have it. It's Portland where? Portland, Oregon. Ah, okay. So it's called Portland East Side, but it's in Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting. Thanks, Dean. Thanks. So, Michelle, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. Um, I'm Michelle Bibby. Um, I am a former DBSA Austin, Texas chapter leader. Um, currently, a DBSA contract. Uh, support group facilitator. I facilitate uh, DBSA support groups specifically for the Black community. Um, I run my own mental health consulting firm, and I am the board president for Via Hope, which is the training and certifying entity for peer specialists in the state of Texas. Well, we're really excited to have both of you join us. Thank you so much. So, uh, Alvin, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Alvin Martin, um, chapter leader with the National Capital Area Chapter in and around um, Washington, D.C., standing out in the Maryland suburbs. Um, and we've maintained a whole bunch of groups now, back to all virtual. Oh, wow. um, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Okay, thanks, thanks, Alvin. Yi? Yeah, my name is Yi. Uh, I am one of the chapter leaders in Orange County, California. And we currently have uh, online support groups during the week and one in-person group and also uh, two groups in the Chinese language. 
Great, thanks. Thanks, Chief. Hi, Ray, would you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Ray. I'm here as uh, one of the leaders with the Pittsburgh chapter uh, that's on Zoom, but I have since moved to Orlando, so I'm actually with the Pittsburgh Orlando chapter. I'm not quite <laughs> sure I'm not one of the leaders there, but, uh, uh, but you know, Pittsburgh is all on Zoom. We're not back in person. We're not allowed to come back into the building yet, so, mm. so I still run the Pittsburgh chapter, but that's the beauty of Zoom. I can run it from Orlando. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Bridget. Hi, I'm Bridget. Um, I am the president of the Greater Chicago chapter, and I actually just recently got nominated to the National Board of Directors, so I'll start that position um, oh, this great. year. And I am a lawyer. That's my <laughs> real, as my, re my real job. <laughs> that's my job <laughs> pays me. <laughs> you mean you're not DBSA, Jeff? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Hey, Denise, we're just introducing ourselves. We have two new members that have joined us, uh, Jean and, and uh, Michelle. So we're just kind of introducing ourselves. Would you like to say hello? Hi, Happy New Year, first happy of all, new to year. everyone. I haven't <laughs> said Happy New Year, too. I'm Denise Babin. I'm from um, Northern New Jersey, DBSA Northern New Jersey. I'm the chapter leader. Uh, but also my full-time job, just to let you know, I'll be celebrating on the 16th with it's Sunday. I'll be celebrating 25 years with the Mental Health Association in the wow. same. Mm, so that's good. a milestone for me. So I'm very happy and, and you know, I'm still here. So yeah. that's me. But basically <laughs> yeah, we have three here. groups and, you know, um, so we have two evening groups. We have an afternoon group. And actually that I was what I was doing just now before I, I was late. I was actually talking to somebody who's going to come into the group tonight. So I also facilitate as well. So oh, great. I'm superwoman, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> You're all super leaders. Oh. You're here. Hey, Jill. Hi, Mike. So you want to introduce yourself real quick? I think everybody knows you already, but formalities. <laughs> <laughs> You're on mute. You're on mute. Mute, mute. Mute. You're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I unmute. I hit the unmute, but whatever. Um, I said, hi, hi, hi. Happy New Year's. You all already know me, so I'm going to kick it to Carla. I don't want to waste any time with blah, blah, blah. So. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> okay, thanks. Carla, everybody knows you too, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Thanks for, for doing this. And. We're in year two of this thing, but now is the now is the heavy lift, you know, because now we we start revealing it to the chapter folk and and get reactions and you know start dealing with that. So, uh, but I'm really excited, and I would just kind of um, implore you to look at this document we're going to look at today as. Uh, that's our master document. We would provide like an executive summary for, for the chapters because they don't need all of that detail. All that detail is to take everything we did last year and kind of put it all together so that we have it in one place. But then we'll do the executive summary and we'll create the slide deck from that. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at this, just think of it not so much as it's going to be implemented like in 23. It's probably going to take three years to be fully implemented. So it'll start in 23. But then, you know, what we'll spend this year doing once we get the feedback in the first two months is really planning out how this can happen. And that's where your chapter expertise comes in. So that's all I can. Uh, let, let me add that as we review it, uh, uh, just this is a draft. This is the first draft. So your input and your comments uh, are going to be very, very important as, as we continue crafting the document. So uh, uh, Carla, did you have a copy that you could share as we go through it? Or did you want to go sure, through it? Sure, I can it? share the screen. Jill is going to keep some copious notes too, but okay. she has a hard copy. And so can you see it? 
Do you need it bigger? There we go. Yeah, yeah if you bigger. could make it a little bit bigger, that'd be great. Is that better? Mm. Better, but could be bigger. There we go. Is that Everybody better? good with that? Right. I think if I go to 200, it'll be, is it that good? Be too big. I think that's great. Yeah. This is 200, so it's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so I have the current group on here. Um, Erin wasn't able to make the meeting today, but she will look at the documents. And I have the current group because you will be the group that is in the implementation phase. Um, any thoughts about that? Anything? Mm -hmm. Here you all are. Make sure I spelled your name <laughs> right. <laughs> and I love this because it shows your work, your stuff, your contribution. So, so Alvin, if you yep. remember, we talked about uh, putting, and ye, both of you said, we have to say like why we did this. And so um, here it is. The need was about our sustenance. Any thoughts or comments on the need? And I'll give you a minute to read it. Could I ask a question? Of course. Okay. Um, uh, in your travels last year, it uh, was the subject of uh, changing the structure of the reaffiliation fees discussed. Like, you know, the it, it was and it wasn't the reaffiliation fees have never been an issue, Jean, because we have this scholarship thing. And all somebody has to say is we can't afford it. And Jill says, okay. <laughs> so like we made it a non-issue by just saying, what, if you can't afford it, then, what, what then so be it. The only, if, if I could finish a thought, the only exception to that has been if a chapter habitually comes like year one, year two, year three, and they can't afford it, then it's a sustainability issue. Was, was so question, Alvin, what were you going to say? Was the question with the thought of, should the fee depend on chapter size or something? Were you asking me, Alvin? Well, yes, okay. Okay, so I was thinking that, um, uh, a structure might be uh, with income of a certain amount. Uh, it would be a certain amount for the reaffiliation fees. Uh, income of a larger amount, the reaffiliation fees might be larger. Um, okay, so so let me let me just sort of put a thought in your mind to mull over. Um, in doing a structure like that, the work that is involved in reaffiliating any chapter is the same. Uh, whether it's a small chapter or a large chapter, we are gathering the same information. We're doing the same amount of work. The fees that we charge right now do not even pay for that. They don't pay for the staff time involved. They don't pay for all of that. So it's already sort of uh, running at a loss. We can do that, but we're already saying we forgive it if you can't do it. So I I don't I, I don't know what you all think. Um, I don't think that's where the problem is, but I have a thought on it. Um, yeah. And so I think if we did that, it would create a situation where 
The chapters would have to provide their financials to national mm -hmm. and being a separate incorporation, I think that could rub the wrong way. Um, I think if the issue is that you don't have the money for the reaffiliation fee, how much is it? Can you remind me, Carla? It's, it's 125. So if you, I think if you don't have the, um, you know, money for the reaffiliation fee, then you can, in the alternative, provide some sort of like scholarship or one-time courtesy or something to the chapters rather than, um, you know, requiring them to provide their financials. I think requiring them to provide their financials is going to put an extra burden on national to reaffiliate them. Yeah. And I just think it, it creates another hurdle. I agree. Yeah. And it's going to rub them the wrong way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Didn't yeah. We interrupt. have our hands up. I don't know if you know that we noticed. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. But okay. Denise and then Ray. Denise Zoom and now. then Ray. Just kidding. Thanks. Um, no, what I was saying, I think it's rather um, to give each chapter a different kind of affiliation fee because they make more or less. You can be a big chapter, but be in such a, 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 a such an area that the individuals cannot pay for their whatever coffee or whatever we're, we're, we're you know asking for. So that is the big problem because with our area, we couldn't absolutely do that. Uh, even though I'm supported by my organization and they do help me with the uh, chapter affiliation fee now. Um, but it is that I have so many individuals that live in um, impoverished areas and live under the poverty level. So a big chapter or a three group chapter sometimes cannot come up with the money because there is no income mm -hmm. coming in. And since I'm part of the organization, most of the funding goes to them. So I'm just hoping that they give me a little like kind of thing in the bucket. I do do some um, presentations regarding DBSA and I do ask for help uh, along the way, but they've been very, very small because mm. of the pandemic right now, it's impossible to ask anybody for funding because some around here, everybody's just overwhelmed and it, it's, it's nuts. Mm. right now anyway so thanks, i didn't thanks, mean to Denise. derail the discussion i was just oh, asking oh. had it been considered so right. apparently it had been considered so. right so ray <laughs> did you want to make a comment i'm going to say the other thing that addressed the issue is something that we did there have been a number of chapters that have changed over to become support groups instead of and been underneath another chapter. And I think that's one of, that's one mm -hmm. of the things that we did in Pittsburgh. We affiliated with the Delaware County chapter. So they file it and we're, we're a sub chapter or sub group right. that, that has that, you know, they can work on the affiliation papers together or pay or groups go in with each other. So I think if we didn't more of that have, and we had talked about that structuring, particularly in this, um, uh, in, in the Zoom type of atmosphere that we we talked extensively about whether we have so many chapters and so many sub so many uh, support groups mm -hmm. that, that are just a support group. And we've operated all the time as a, as a support group. We actually group. Been, we actually have it as part of the yeah so yeah we've been in, we've been with DBSA since the beginning you know for. Yeah. 35 years but we've wow. never collected money and we've never done stuff fundraising and we just meet as a support group every week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and have done that for over 30 years just as, so we don't raise any money any kind of way yeah. and, and kind of to build on what you were saying Ray, i i think uh the, the this issue uh, several other I, I think issues will kind of clarify themselves as we uh uh tighten up our, our thoughts on how we're going to proceed with this document. And, and um, as, as we get into year, you know, towards the end of the year, going into the next one, we'll have to, we'll have to re-examine a lot of things. So thanks. So moving forward on this, the overall goal was to expand the number, enhance the strength, and stabilize the sustainability as a support group network, right? It wasn't necessarily by about the chapters. It was about the support groups. Mm -hmm. 
by furthering our understanding of our audience and creating a simplified, engaging, and sustainable structure for state organization chapter and support group network. And it, it wouldn't necessarily have to be called that. We're just using that terminology because that's the terminology that has been used up to this point. Mm -hmm. And then the data gathering is what we did last year. You know, these are the, the steps that we took. We examined and agreed on the definition of sustainability. And we talked about, um, we reviewed the data for the reasons of dissolution of chapters in 2021. And you all had an opportunity to take a look at that as part of the materials that I sent. And if you looked at that alone, compared to this, you would see exactly where it came from. But then we had um, the self-assessment that the support group and chapter leaders filled out. And they basically told us the exact things that they were good at and things that they weren't. And unfortunately, the ones that they said they weren't were the very things that we needed them to function as a high, high performing chapter. Um, Michelle, did you have your hand up? Yes, I do. And sorry to go backwards. Um, can you no, no go back to the um... the need overall goal? Uh, maybe need. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, the need. Uh, I'm just for uh, the use of recovery-oriented, strength-based language. I'm wondering okay. if we can get rid of that word volunteer volatility um, and replace it with something that is more strength-based, uh, bandwidth, stamina. I like that. Bandwidth, I think, says it. Does everyone agree with that change, bandwidth? Okay. I love that. Okay. Thank that's, you. Yeah, sure. No, thank you. That's great. See, this is why we do this. And if, if, uh, if you don't mind, I just want to make sure we get some feedback on the goal because I think that's kind of important too. So uh, does anybody have any comments on the overall goal or if we're good with that and can proceed? Okay. Thanks, Carla. Let's let's go ahead and move on then. No problem. So we did the data gathering and it included the SWOT analysis. And then we answered some probing questions, right? You remember that session where uh, Jean and Michelle, for the two of you, you, for your benefit, we had some probing questions that we just sort of asked everyone and then and then, you know, recorded those responses and everything seemed to be aligned with what we learned and what we concluded. So these are really important for um, everyone to agree on. So let's try and spend the bulk of our time here. So what we learned and concluded, number one, nonprofit sustainability occurs when a nonprofit attracts and effectively uses enough money and the right kinds of peer volunteer time, the money of today for DBSA, necessary to achieve long-term outcome goals. Okay, and this is taken from a book that we used as sort of our guide. I'm looking for it right now. <laughs> And it's called Reinventing Social Change. Okay, so it's a real book. And according to this book, it requires knowing long-term outcome goals, having a strategy to achieve those goals, and then effectively using enough money and peer volunteers. So that's part of the sustainability, right? You can't sustain without money and you can't sustain without people. So what do you all think of that? And there's more to it, but let's stop there. Okay. 
Is there a defin definition of enough for enough money? Actually, if we go to the next bullet, D, attracting the right kinds of money from organizations who are interested in helping DBSA reinvent the social change that was begun in 1985. 1985 was our incorporation date. And um, we actually had some conversation last year about whether we were trying, we, the founders, were trying to provide for social change. And, and the two founders we talked to, Mary Lou Cielo and Rose Curlin, both said yes, that, that they were trying to implement social change. And in fact, they did. And so the premise of this reinventing social change is that um, it is sexier for people to give money to nonprofit organizations that are reinventing social change <laughs> than just wanting money. So enough has to do with sustainability. It has to do with what you need in order to sustain the activity that you want to engage in. And then attracting enough peer volunteers to comfortably sustain support groups as well as chapter administration and whatever that would look like. Does that help to answer that question, Jean? Um, yes, <laughs> sort of. Um, sort of. Um, for, I was thinking in terms of our chapter and um, we are self, uh, self sustaining for the most part through contributions from our, our members. And um, so that's good. And then two, we, um, uh, we effectively manage those funds or spend those funds um, to, to reinvest in our chapter. So um, uh, enough See, but for are, many chapters, for many chapters, they aren't getting to that sustainable okay. level, which okay. is basically what we were talking about in the beginning when you were talking about fees and how they couldn't afford them. Mm -hmm. It's because they can't, they haven't attracted enough money to be sustainable. Okay. Right. And, and you need an equal part of money and people in order for it to work. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, you know, it, it, it'll vary for each each chapter. I, I know that, uh, you know, in Louisville, we need very little money. Uh, just a few hundred dollars gets us through the year, uh, you know, so it, it just depends on, on the needs of each chapter. Okay. It does. So, so if um, if you look at the reasons for dissolution, they fell into those categories, succession planning and recruitment, you know, just number of support group facilitators because there's burnout going on. And what we have realized is that if you truly want to avoid burnout, you need about four support group leaders per support group that you run. Now think about that for a second. That's a lot, a lot of facilitators. But the reason for that is so that they can be one week on, three weeks off so that they can maintain their own wellness. That's the reason for that formula. Um, lack of participation, sometimes it just petered off. And then uh, COVID-19 hit us pretty hard. We, um, in the past two years, we have lost about 30 chapters. Okay. Out of but, how many chapters? But, I'm sorry, what? Out of how many chapters? 155 when we started. We're at 125 right now. Now, some of it was intentional. Remember, we we encouraged chapters to start merging and doing that with this in mind, to be honest with you. I suspected we were kind of 
going in this direction. So we said, why does a support group have to have its own chapter? That's where this began. And so now we're really looking at encouraging chapters to just take on support groups, you know, by themselves uh, instead of having to start a chapter. So in fact, what has happened during COVID to the number of support groups? We, lo we lost 30. And we're not sure right now how many were COVID related or not. Jill, you don't have a look into that yet, do you? No, but Alvin, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak a, a, for a second. Our support groups during COVID, Alvin, have actually gone up and gone up significantly, okay. which is a great yeah. thing. Yeah, it's just it's the chapters thing. that we lost, but our yeah. support groups have increased. And, you know, the discovery of Zoom has been, <laughs> you know, we went from what is Zoom to, oh, how many could we have, you know, so, so that's all really good. Um, so we started to see the shift of chapters, just not being able to sustain and support groups continuing to grow and continuing to be formed. We haven't had a, a chapter, a new chapter start in the past year, have we, Jill? Have we had any brand new chapters? Uh, we have uh, one or two, but the one that was started, I, I'm waiting to see when they submit their reaffiliation paperwork this year. I think it's struggling, you know, no matter how much I tried to get it to open up as a support group, they wanted to be a chapter and now yeah. yeah, Michelle, you have a raised hand. To the um, the online, uh, because I've been facilitating DBSA online support groups for Support Group Central for a little over five years. So the pandemic brought about an explosion of um, mm -hmm. online support group participants we're now um, utilizing three facilitators for the uh, regular DBSA online support groups. 50 some odd people can register. So my question is this sustainability piece in terms of financial uh, sustainability, does any part of this report address sustainability for the online support groups? Which it I doesn't. guess speaks to DBSA, the national organization. Right. So this document is addressing the chapters. It's not addressing the national organization. So the answer to your question is no. Now the question is, should it? Maybe. Maybe there should be a mention of it. Um, just to kind of show what the trend has been, because I think it proves the point. What do you all think? Well, for me, as for me, I think it should be shared. Because one, you see how hard the chapters are working. Two, you, seen, you see sometimes the sustainability with the chapters. You're seeing the growth by the chapters also because they're willing to look at things differently. You see it on all of us here when we meet. So I think it's a good thing to let national know that we are doing what we possibly all can and that people are really working hard in their chapters to sustain, even though the funds might not be there, they're still putting hours and hours of volunteer work into these chapters. And that, I think it's a great thing. And Zoom has been a blessing for so many. And I can yeah. tell you one success story in my group, I, it took me like four months March, April, May, June, to get this individual on. He never talked during the physical meetings. He never said anything. He blossomed with Zoom so much that now he's going across America and visiting different Zoom groups. So I'm very proud of him. And it's such a success story. And that warms my heart because we are there giving that kind of attention to our members. And I go out of my... I've, Get, go yeah. out of my way to contact them and work with them and so they can get on Zoom. And if they can't use the phone, whatever I need to do 
to convince them they need this because it's so important to have something in during your week to go into and look forward to. And it's camaraderie also, and that you can't put a price on. Well, and I think too, if we include that, we also need to include the piece that you're talking about, Denise, which is the chapters being willing to open up beyond geographic boundaries because they sort of go hand in hand. I don't think that a lot of people are aware of the explosion. And I love that word, Michelle, because that's truly what happened. All of a sudden the need skyrocketed and we went from having six groups to 11 to 33 because we had to have these three simultaneous groups for each of those 11 slots. And so um, I don't think people were aware of that. And today we have about 44 groups going mm. on every week. Well, and I, we I, went well, from six to four to 44 in two years. But you know, when you read the, the um, welcome statement, that should be in there. You're welcome to join any support groups that are among the DBSA chapters. And I think that should be enough to be addressed because that's so important that they know, hey, I tell my members when they first come in, and when I talk to them and, and when, when they call in and say, oh, I'm interested, I said, do you know that you can go all over the United States and you don't have to get in a plane, you don't have to get in a train and you don't have to drive? How wonderful is that? So that's how I got, a, we won I'm in Jersey, say I'm very proud because mm -hmm. um, we went to Nomad chapter for the Thanksgiving and we yeah. went to the Christmas uh, meeting and New Jersey won all, both events because we took tally of who was coming in and out of the group. I even had my sister come in because she also has bipolar and she was smitten. So she's getting ready to go into some groups, but she can't come into mine. So I'll send her somewhere else. But family, friends, what, whatever we can do, we can get them on if we stay strong and, and you know that culture, it's resources, what you can provide in those groups. And that's most needed at this point right. still. And, and really it's the support group. Ray, you had your hand raised. Yeah, Ray. Well, I was, I was gonna say this came up in the CLC, the, the chapter leadership uh, group as to what we should do from a national standpoint in terms of the zip code uh, location of groups. If you're looking for a group to join, is it even uh, relevant anymore to list your zip code? You know, and whether that, you know, there was discussion as to whether the zip code of group finding even works. Some people feel that it, it needs to change somehow or another because it's not uh, picking up the groups within like a 25 mile radius. But now that most of all of us are on Zoom and many of us are going to like in Pittsburgh, we will keep a, a Zoom chapter, even though we'll, when we're able to go back to in-person, we will add on an in-person group, but we will not let go of the, the Zoom group. It will be ongoing. And many of the other chapters say that they're going to do something of similar nature. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to redefine what a group is. You know, is it a Pittsburgh chapter? We may even consider what whether that's a part of our name anymore, because we mm -hmm. have people who are coming in from two hours away to our group and it's fantastic. Some of them are handicapped and they could never be able to attend a group. Some of them live in small towns, which we would never, you don't have enough people to establish a group. So I think that there's tremendous opportunity to look at our virtual um, footprint and expand on that. I think it's a lot of opportunity in terms of what we're talking about here in terms of money. It really doesn't cost anything more to add somebody from two miles away or 20 miles away or 200 miles away. So I think there's yeah, a yeah. tremendous amount of opportunity to reach out to what is a, a huge population that has come into fold because of COVID in terms of mental health needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ray, Ray I, and I, I agree. I, th I think you're, you're right on point. <clears throat> and I think as we develop an action plan, that'll definitely be part of the action plan uh, in the upcoming month or two, because that does need to be uh, re-examined. So I'm, I'm yeah. sure that'll be part of our, one of our next steps. Yeah, Jill. You're, You're on, on mute, mute Jill. <laughs> Sorry, I just don't want the dog to bark during the meeting. Um, 
Anyways, I just wanted to answer Ray's question very quickly. Ray, unfortunately, our database is very limited. I can only assign one zip code per group, okay? With that being said, uh, we also recognize that there were some uh, issues that were occurring with the database zip code lookup. And so uh, Dante Freeman from our communications department and our web guru who is offsite is working on the situation. They said that they had um, fixed it, but I need to spend the time um, maybe over the weekend or something. I don't know. <laughs> In your spare time. To check things. Yeah, my spare time and to try to check some stuff. But that is um, a longstanding challenge for us. And when we want to come to budgeting and talking about that, where do we want to spend the most money investment? Yeah. You know, the services, getting more support groups, or exactly having a perfect, I mean, if you go by state and you go into your state, we have all of the chapters and support groups listed there with their cities that they're located near. Let me note that we are listed as a DC group, which is fine, but we also have groups and you know, our official address is in Maryland, but mm -hmm. we're told we can't be listed as both. No, Alvin, I said that we need to have an, uh, a meeting offline. Oh, okay, I, okay, I sent you okay. An email about we'll, that. Okay, we'll, we'll yeah. pursue that. Okay, yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, so we're we're forty five minutes into it and on page two. So uh, if if so everybody's in agreement, I, we can we maybe move ahead to the next section. So we're on the self assessment, and um, you know you're going to have some time to read this through also because I'll I'll resend the link so that you can give it you know a more careful look but the examination of the stakeholder survey told us a few things and we grouped excellent and born to do it together and adequately good and relatively unskilled together because there was a discussion about adequately good adequate is not sustainable adequate means getting by and so that's why those two were grouped together. And so overall, the leaders really felt that they, they were really good at support groups, which we would expect, right? And they felt very confident and very comfortable in the support groups. And anything related to chapter administration, they, they listed in multiple areas of this self-assessment that they were just struggling, you know? And, and so it's, pretty much what we were predicting. Mm -hmm. um, most respondents identified that they feel relatively unskilled at chapter administration, which, okay, but, you know, then, then what do you do? Well, you maybe reduce the number of chapters. So mm -hmm. the SWOT analysis conducted is on pages three and four. So I'm not gonna go through that. You can look at all of this on your own. You have seen it before, except for Jean and Michelle. Um, so we can go through that. And then we, I'm gonna skip after the SWOT to the, um, to the probing questions. And these were the questions we asked. What about the current structure and defi definition of chapters makes sense? What doesn't make sense? Uh, what's the value of chapters? What do support groups need to thrive? That was an important one. How do chapters help support groups to thrive? And then if there weren't a chapter as we know it, how could support groups be supported? Okay, so the answers to all of those probing questions are all underneath there because we went through them as a group and these were the answers that, um, that everyone you know, made. So the high level recommendations are what I think we should spend the remainder of our few minutes on. And this was what we talked about in our last meeting. Mm -hmm. So number one was to discourage the formation of city-based DBSA chapters and create state or regionally based 
chapters to streamline that administration process for volunteer leaders. You know, if you reduce the number of chapters, your needs for administration go down. And I remember that conversation vividly. Yeah, I, I wonder how strong is the encouragement or pressure for single chapter, single group chapters and the like to to team up going to be? I, I don't have a good enough feel of the situation. Are, are there places that say we've always done it this way and we we don't want to, want, want to change? And is it going to be where they can't sustain or is it going to be in any case? Well, the, I think we're going to find out the answer to that question in the feedback sessions. In part, yes. Yeah. Um, the next high level recommendation was around the creation of a chapter advancement team. And Jean, wherever you are, you're not on my screen right now. But really, um, the ideal group for this is the trainers. You know, they're, they're the ones that are the most seasoned to um, be able to help work with chapters on areas to help strengthen their capacity. You know, things like succession planning and, and I can help put the program together. I've done this before. How to conduct the SWOT analysis. How you do some basic strategy, not the big, not the big stuff, the little stuff, you know, to, to just, how do you develop your board? How do you get them ready? And then they would be called cats and um, cat members could help to identify other chapter leaders who might be willing to assist. I know, you know, such and such a chapter is, was in a similar situation. Maybe they could give you some advice. So so this is for those chapters that are struggling, that want to give it another try. And we're gonna have those because it's going to be what you talked about, Alvin, in saying this is the way we've always done it. We wanna try, we, you know, okay. So the second part uh, or the next part is to identify those consistently struggling chapters and present them with the obvious options. We can't direct anything that they do. We can only suggest work with other chapters in the state or region to create, you know, something that is larger or work with cat members to increase the chapter's internal bench strength in 2022. And if you think about this for a second, we could even say 2022 and 2023. Um, because I remember the conversation around this was to present a first, because uh, it was intentional that you wanted people to think about the larger chapter first, instead of automatically going to the giving it one more try. I'm going to stop here for a second. So any, any thoughts, comments at this point? Yeah, Ray. You know, I think keeping in line with something Michelle said in terms of uh, positive terminology, that number one where it says discourage the formation of city-based and, you know, something that you always saying that, that might be, you know, that may be a point for those who we've always done it this way. And it looks like we're taking away something. If somebody's had a city-based one for years and we say, okay, we're going to discourage that. I, I just lead it off with encouraging state-based, you know, state and uh, regional based. And yes. And yes. so we're not, we're not taking away from anything, but we're going toward state and regional base in order to uh, streamline the administrative overhead of, of the chapter responsibility. Oh, excellent, excellent point, Ray. Excellent, thank you. Because if that's what we're saying is, you know, the problem, I know it was for our group, uh, you know, all the administrative overhead and all those, e even the finances, if we go more statewide, and that's why we became a subgroup yeah. to Delaware County, 
because I didn't want to do all the administrative stuff, which I was stuck right. doing myself. Yeah, it's always best to accentuate the positive, right? Right. <laughs> Oh, any other thoughts? And you on... will notice I put the word possibly in number two. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Michelle. So under number three, identify consistently struggling chapters. What's the criteria for identifying us? How do, how do we know who is well, determining we're... what is a struggling chapter? Uh, we would like if we see over the course of three years they haven't been able to pay fees or over the course of three years there have been i mean jill could probably name what those sure. struggling chapters consistently do we know who they are would you like me to well, speak about it carla right now Will yes please quick um michelle Real quick. um we um are constantly asking for scholarships they have the same officers year after year after year. They um, struggle to um, support their support groups. Um, they don't have enough facilitators for their support groups. Um, they disconnect from us. They do things like change their email addresses or change their websites. They don't advise us. They don't show up to a chapter chat. And I don't mean to sound that way, that chapter chats be all end all, but they're not participating. Gotcha. And in, mm -hmm. Um, even in 2022, I'm going to say this quickly, we do have three chapters that are dissolving. Not that we told them they had to dissolve, but they contacted me and said, enough, right. we're done. And yeah. two of them, I said to them very nicely, well, what would you like to do? Do you want to just dissolve? Or would you like to merge? Or would you like to become a support group of someone else? And you know what? Two out of the three, we'd like to become a support group of a better, a stronger chapter. Stronger. Mm -hmm. They didn't say better but stronger that can have the bandwidth. Yeah. So it was remember, a problem. We can't tell them what to do. Yeah, I, and I think they probably have uh, self-identified that situation and come to, the, come to that conclusion themselves. Well, um, I suspect that many struggling chapters can be identified by these criteria. Right. I guess I worry that there could be chapters that are dependent on particular people that are sort of going on all right for now and have been for a while, but they may be fragile in the sense of something comes up and they don't have depth, but that might not be as readily identified. So, thanks. So yeah, we've well, got, yeah, we've got how many more points on the high level recommendations? I'd like to get through that totally. And we only have a few it. minutes. So that's all, that's all of them. We have right here. So we'll do four, five, six, and seven real yeah, fast. Yeah, let's do those. So DBSA National would then work with the existing local chapters on transition plans, you know, into those that decide they want to do the state or regional chapters. And regional, could, one example could be New England, or it could be North, Pacific Northwest, or it could be Southern Cal, Northern Cal, or, you know, whatever... It could be Orange County, it, you know, just leave it in Orange County. So uh, it would be determined by the chapters what those would look like and, and it would be flexible. Number five is to complete that transition to the structure. It's anticipated between 2023 and 2025. So we're not saying this needs to be done by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. We're saying we got four years essentially part of this year all of 23 24 25 and that's a very reasonable timeline for this kind of change mm -hmm. and then create an ongoing collaboration opportunities through which national can learn from the chapter and support group network and the network can benefit benefit from national's support and then the network can learn from each other, you know? So like, we're going to increase the dialogue every way by doing this. And then enhance visibility mm -hmm. of community-based support groups 
on the internet by understanding who's registering for groups, determining how to start groups for communities we're not currently serving. And this speaks to the cultural and identity-based groups, you know, such as the Black community, LGBT, et cetera. So that's the end of the high-level recommendations, Mike. Right. So uh, please, uh, anybody have any thoughts they want to share? We might have to go a few minutes over, but I, I think it's important that we, you know, cover cover these seven points, and, and we can catch the rest of the the document uh, uh, at the next meeting. Yeah, I, uh, if I may, I, I think uh, in the spirit of uh, getting more uh, feedback from chapter leaders, uh, this is it possible to share the recording of this meeting? So. For example, I can share this with our president. What do you all think? I have no objection. I don't no. know that it'll work well. I, I would rather not only because I would like the chapter network to all hear it at the same time. Mm. Okay. You know, because okay. otherwise there's a preference of why did he hear it? And why couldn't I hear it? And you know, like, um, I don't know. I mm -hmm. I don't know what that would be because I think we have to have a very deliberate communications plan from this point forward. And my thought was, we do the presentation at the end of the month. Then we can send the executive summary out once that presentation has gone out there. Mm. so that people aren't just reading it without context mm -hmm. okay so do you so there's going to be a presentation at the end of the month to all the chapter leaders about this yes it would be okay. mike and mike you were looking for another person yeah That's i know right. I talked to you about it right so if, if somebody would like to join in on the call when we when we have these calls with the with the chapter leaders um uh, it, it would I would appreciate you know some some additional you know an additional person to help provide feedback so if anybody's interested in volunteering for that I, I'd certainly appreciate it yeah, I would but, um, <clears throat> I would but it would be uh, for specific times only because I've got my own job I so understand. it would be at specific right. times anyway so I, I'd love to volunteer you know help you out it's no problem thank you that. thank you um, yeah I would plan to be on the call because I'd be interested in seeing the rea reactions. Um, I'm checking my count. These are on the 24th and 27th. Yes. The, the one thing, the 24th is from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And the 27th is from noon to 1.30 the, uh, Central um, Time. 6 to 7.30. Um, oh, oh, the 24th. Well, Offhand, I, I don't recommend a lot of presenters. I yeah. would recommend, I mean, I, I yeah. think it would be great for all of you. The to numbers can be on the call. Available. Do you, do you need the yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, what so, are the dates again? The 24th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. So for you, 7 to 8.30 and then the 27th, which is a Thursday, from new, uh, 1 to 2.30 your time. Well, I could do the 24th if, you, if I necessary. I could do the 24th because that's in the evening and I have no problem working with somebody on the e in the evening or yeah, okay. no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. E, do you think you could do the other one, the 27th? Um. I, I really can't take on anything more right now. So unfortunately. Okay. okay. Thanks, Yi. Yeah. So so this would be open to all chapter leaders, right? This presentation. Absolutely. Everyone. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll we'll figure out who the second one could be, Mike. Okay. Well we'll we'll worry maybe, about maybe that. Maybe Christian's point. available yeah. or oh, you know, some the, of the folks. The second one, on. the 20, is it from 12 my time or is that one my time? One year time, one Eastern time, 12 Central. Mm -hmm. oh. And it goes an hour? 
and a half. An hour and a half. No, I got yeah. a doctor's appointment right after, and I can't do that one. But I can okay. do the first one. Yep. Thanks, Denise. I volunteer, but I know nothing. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. new. <laughs> Thanks, I could <Jane>. be dangerous. <laughs> That could be your excuse, though. I'm new. I'm just presenting. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jean. Thanks for the thanks for the emotional support. So uh, we'll we'll wrap up. I think there's maybe just a couple more paragraphs we'll hit real quick next time, and then we'll be able to to move forward on on, on the next step. Uh, our next action steps that, that we'll be taking. Well, actually, can we ask everybody to take a look at this in the next week? Because we really have to have this ready to go. Our next meeting is oh, after that, those meetings happen. Yeah. So if yeah, we could if, ask if everybody mind, to look. Yeah. Just give it a quick run through. Any, any comments or, or questions yeah. or anything, just drop it off to me or Carla or Jill. Or drop them in. You can just use yeah. it as a suggestion. Yeah, mm. exactly. So, could you say oh, about the presentation, Mike? Um, just real quick, if you need me to talk to you, um, which is the number that I contact? Do you want my number? How is this going to work? Do you rather do it over email? Let's uh, let's um, we'll we'll take it offline. We'll we'll get together, Denise. I'll I'll get your number from Carl, and we'll we'll talk. Okay, oh, cool. Good. Yeah, yep. perfect. Just want to make sure. Yep. Thank so, you. Yeah. And, and I'll help any... you guys with the deck. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So is there specificity about the high level recommendations further? I mean, further specificity other than what's in the document here? In the document, um, there will be. It has not there, been not at this time. Not okay. at this time. This will be so, the framework for for the action plan, so to speak, yeah. Good answer, Mike, oh, good answer. <laughs> if you look at the end of the document, you'll see that there's like a transition timetable that starts to give you a rough idea of how things will happen. And then we'll fill that in as we go. Okay. okay. All right, thanks everybody. Very productive Thanks meeting all. today. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Thanks, Carla. Okay. Thanks, Gail. Thanks, everybody.